subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to get all my latest writing tips and videos. And remember, be original. Be a writing original. What's up everybody, Adrian here. Welcome back to a continuation of that snake's short story that I'm working on. This is part five. I actually finished the entire story. Um, and now I'm just going back to do some corrections, you know, cut it down, um, you know, to do like a start on my official first draft. And then so where we picked off last time was you, you know, you know, Gabe and Will, best friends in the forest. They went to bury a kitten that just got eaten by a snake and they met Marvin. Um, Marvin shows up and you find out that actually Marvin and Gabe, they became friends all of a sudden instead of warning, sworn enemies. And um, you're going to find out why they're all of a sudden friends and why Gabe asked Marvin to meet them in the forest and basically to do an initiation. And in the meanwhile, like, um, Will, like, came across a little garter snake, like, two-inch, like, garter snake, and he, like, freaked out. And then Marvin has an idea of the initiation that he wants Gabe to do and it involves the garter snake. So he told in the last video Marvin said to Gabe hold him down meaning to Will hold Will down um and I you know came up with the initiation and then Gabe's like so what do you want me to do so Marvin's gonna tell him right now so now let's continue um and in this video we're actually going to finish off with one third of the movie of the story okay so here we go so Marvin says Shove the snake into Will's mouth. That's his initiation. So Will, when he hears this, in parentheticals, I wrote freaks. But I should have wrote a better, like, adjective. But, um, so, he, like, when he hears this, he goes crazy. So he starts screaming, like, Gabe, please, no! And then Marvin's like, you want a spot at the popular table? So see, now we have a motive, a reason. For this to happen, not just because, oh, I want some action. And this helps with character development. And then you'll find out later, well, what spot about this table? What popular table? Like, what's going on here? So Will says, don't listen to him, Gabe. He's not really your friend. Marvin says, if you do this, I'll even invite you to the massive house party tonight. And Will's like, it's a lie. He's only using you as a punching bag and for him and his buddies to laugh at you. And Marvin's like, I even introduce you to the hot, to the head cheerleader. So see, it's like a back and forth battle now between like, what's Gabe going to do? Is he going to listen to his best friend, Will? Or is he going to listen to this bully, Marvin, that's probably using him, maybe not, but, you know, he wants to be part of that cool crowd. So, let's continue to the next uh, page. Alright, so now Gabe um, says, I'm sorry, Will. He, like, he makes his decision. What's he going to do? Is he going to listen to Marvin? Or is he going to listen to his friend Will? So Gabe's like, I'm sorry, Will. But you have to face your fears just like I did. Oh, no. So... Will closes his eyes and slams his mouth shut. Marvin holds his nose. Finally, Will, forced to take a breath, opens his mouth. Gabe slakes, slips the snake in. Will's eyes bulge out of his head. He screams, um, echoes through the whole forest. Cats become frightened. He passes out, body limp in Marvin's arms. Marvin lets go. Will drops... Uh, to the ground, unconscious. Gabe um, instantly shows shame on his face, and the snake escapes from Will's mouth, slithers away. So now, Gabe instantly, you know, so in parenthetical, shameful, but uh, I'll probably cut that out. So Gabe says, he says to Marvin, There, you happy? So did I pass? Okay, so Marvin says, yeah, with flying colors. So Gabe asks, so what time is the house party tonight? You know, since he did what Marvin wanted him to do. So Marvin, in parentheticals, 
chuckles. So, um, Marvin says, there is no house party. I just wanted to see if you would actually do it. Ah, oh, man. So, Will was right. Yeah, it was supposed to be there is no house party. So, that's a mistake. So, there is no house party. So, Will was right. He was just using them. It was a lie. And, man, like, you know, Will, I mean, Gabe feels really bad. So, Gabe is left stunned. Will shows signs of life. So, he, like, you know, be, you know, comes conscious again. Marvin starts to leave. So, Marvin continues... But the, uh, by the way, I'm still going to kick your ass at school during lunchtime. Don't be late this time. So after he, after the bully Mar uh, Marvin lied to Gabe to get him to shove the snake in Will's mouth, like he lied, and he's still gonna kick Gabe's ass. Wow. Like at this point, you're gonna you should really hate Marvin and feel really bad for Gabe. But Gabe is still like a like a jerk for what he did. But I gave him a reason to why he wanted to do it. So Gabe uh, attacks Marvin from behind. Okay. So now instead of running away, he like attacks him. So Gabe attacks Marvin from behind. Uh, behind like running into a chubby brick wall. Oh, so um, when he runs into him, it's like hitting a chubby brick wall. He gets swatted away like a fly. Marvin goes in for the kill. Suddenly, Toby the cat, which I mentioned in that previous video, like Toby the cat is a cat that is um, Gabe's favorite cat. And when he showed up for the first time in the last episode, um, you know, they gave each other like a big hug and it was rubbing against Gabe's leg. And so he's really close to this cat. So he, this cat sees that Gabe is getting attacked. So this um, cat Toby uh, comes to the rescue and claws Marvin's leg. Um, Marvin's taken by surprise. He field goal kicks the cat across the forest, um, slamming into a tree trunk. So he kicks the cat across the forest and it slams into a tree. Gabe freaks, grabs... The small shovel that he, you know, that Will was using to dig the hole for the kitten. So he grabs the shovel and slices Marvin across the face. Draws first blood. Uh-oh. So now if he didn't hate Marvin, he like kicked the cat across, you know, into a tree. And now Gabe is, you know, cut Marvin with a shovel. So now it's getting interesting. Let's continue. So after Gabe hit Marvin with a shovel, cutting him across the face, we pick it up from there. So Marvin, he's stunned. Marvin attacks Gabe, beats him into a bloody pulp, and snaps his arm like a twig. Now I did that quick because you don't have to drag it out and show every punch and choreographed move. You just say what basically happens, you know, because Marvin is such a gigantic, like, you know, fat linebacker that there's, you know, a one-sided beatdown, basically. I could even write that. A one-sided beatdown. And he snaps his arm like a twig. Luckily, Marvin gets winded um, and stops the massacre. He leaves. Will is awake. Blank look on his face. Staring into space. Traumatized. Gabe spits out blood um, as he comes to. He struggles up, arm hanging from his socket. So it's a pretty bad break. Gabe says, I guess I deserve that. I think my arm's broken. Or he could just say my arm's broken. Are you hurt? Asking Will. So Will doesn't uh, respond. Keeps staring off into space. So clearly something is severely wrong with Will mentally now. Um, Gabe continues says um come on let's go home gabe limps away uh will is in his own world gabe yanks him by the shirt will zombie walks after 
So now we cut to later uh, when they arrive home. So both arrive at the house. You know, the grandpa's house. So they arrive at the house. They look like they have returned from war. Um, Gabe notices the front door cracked open. So it's not locked. It's open. They enter the living room. Gabe calls out to Grandpa Jack. No answer. Wolf stands around like a wallflower. Gabe goes upstairs and checks in Grandpa's room. Empty. He notices a handful of pill bottles um, standing on his nightstand. Remember, because he had to take medicine for his like heart condition. Wolf shuffles into... So now we go to Will, and Will shuffles into the open den. He instantly halts. He is unfazed by what he sees. Same blank expression. Gabe returns and pokes his head into the den. He sees Grandpa Jack laying down on the sofa with a large snake wrapped tightly around his throat. He goes in and out of consciousness. Gabe's face spasms in shock. He springs into action. Will doesn't move a muscle. So wow, that's why the door was open. That's why Grandpa Jack wasn't making any noise. Because, and apparently it was all the medicine he probably like took. Because earlier in the, you know, movie I explained how he mistakes the dosage sometimes he overtook it and it it like makes him like pass out or super groggy so i already set that up so this makes sense if you remember that so he's being choked out he's like the life is being choked out of him so let's continue um with the with the page so let's finish off the first half of the story with this final page and then we'll continue the second half of the story in the next uh, episode but so um, as Grandpa Jack is being choked out by a gigantic snake um, Gabe uh, panicked uh, what are you just standing there for help me he's yelling this to Will Will frozen like a statue Gabe with his one good arm tries ripping the snake off the snake tightens his grip. Grandpa Jack's eyes roll, roll in the back of his head. Gabe gives it all he's got and pries the snake off, throws it into the corner. I could even put like near Will. Gabe uh, yells, Will, call the ambulance! Gabe checks uh, Grandpa Jack's vital signs. He uh, clutches his chest. Um, the snake slithers past Will. Zero reaction. So now Will doesn't even flinch when he sees a gigantic snake. He freaked out from a teeny tiny two inch snake. But now he's like has like PTSD or something. So Gabe says, he's having a heart attack. Um, I can't do CPR with one arm. Help me. Um, help me get him on the floor. Will, help! So Will doesn't move. Gabe pumps his chest with one arm, but is failing. He tries pulling off... Tr he tries pulling Grandpa Jack off the bed, but can't. And then, that's where we're gonna leave it off. Because I basically stop it there on purpose to let the reader or the audience not know what happens. So I'll let you know, like, later in the movie, someone will bring it up and, and mention what happens if Grandpa Jack lives or dies. But you don't know right now if he lives or dies. I left it on a cliffhanger. So you're going to have to tune in next episode to see what happens whenever they bring it up. So that's one third of the story finished. I hope you guys enjoyed it so far. Next episode will pick up with part two you'll meet some more characters you'll find out what happened to grandpa jack if you lived or died so i hope you enjoyed it so far please like and subscribe to this video 
help me grow my channel. I want to get to 100 subscribers very soon because Halloween is coming up. And we're gonna, I'm going to have like a gigantic like live stream, Halloween, 100 subscriber party, stuff like that. So please, guys, um, subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. Until next time, thank you so very much. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Please like, share this video. Hit me up on Facebook and Twitter. Comment down below. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And also, don't forget to check out my other videos. And until next time, remember my motto, where story comes first.